Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk about thermal expansion. Our objectives are going to be to calculate the linear and volumetric expansion of a solid as a function of temperature. So, thermal expansion. When objects are heated, they tend to expand, and when they're cooled, they tend to contract. Now, at higher temperatures, the objects have higher average kinetic energies, so their particles vibrate more. That's why they're more expanded. And at higher levels of vibration, the particles aren't bound as tightly to each other, and it gets bigger. Think about it. You've probably seen this before. When you've got a stuck jar of pickles or something you can't open, run it under hot water in the sink for a minute. The metal, the lid, expands faster than the glass, and therefore it becomes looser. You can then open the lid. Now, when we talk about linear expansion, an object expanding in one dimension, the amount that it expands as a function of temperature is characterized by its linear coefficient of expansion. And when we analyze this, we're going to refer to that as alpha. And you would look this up for a specific material. So the change in an object's length is equal to its linear coefficient of expansion, alpha, times its initial length, times the change in temperature. And that change in temperature can be either in kelvins or degrees Celsius because they have the same difference between them. They have the same magnitude of a change. When we talk about volumetric expansion or three-dimensional expansion on the other hand, we have to use the volumetric coefficient of expansion here, beta. And in most cases, the volumetric coefficient of expansion is right around three times the linear coefficient of expansion. So our formula for change in volume will be the volumetric coefficient of expansion times the initial volume of an object times the change in temperature, again in either kelvins or degrees Celsius. So let's show a couple of coefficients of thermal expansion at 20 degrees Celsius. Material like aluminum has a linear coefficient of expansion of around 23 and a volumetric coefficient of expansion of about 69 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. Concrete, 12 and 36, again roughly three times larger. Diamond, 1 and 3. Glass, 9 and 27. Stainless steel, 17 and 51. And water, 69 and 207. But you've got to be careful. Water actually expands when it freezes, so calculations near the freezing point of water are a little bit more complicated. There's some more items we have to take into account there. So you really have to be at a temperature greater than about 4 degrees Celsius to use these. Otherwise, water has its own special set of circumstances. Let's take a look at an example. A concrete railroad tie has a length of 2.45 meters on a hot, sunny 35 degrees Celsius day. What is the length of the railroad tie in winter when the temperature dips to minus 25 degrees C? Well, the first thing I would do here is I'm going to go back and I'm going to find out the linear coefficient of expansion for concrete. Here is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. So I'll write that down. The linear coefficient of expansion of concrete is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. All right, now let's figure out how much its length changes. Delta L is going to be equal to alpha times its initial length times its change in temperature, where our alpha again is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times our initial length, 2.45 meters, times our change in temperature from 35 to minus 25. Well, that's a change of negative 60 degrees C. And when I put all that into my calculator, I come up with about negative 0 0.0018 meter. Now, if I want to find what its final length is, well, I need to realize that change in length is always the final value minus the initial value. So that will be L minus L initial. And if we want the final value L, well, that's just going to be delta L plus L initial which is negative 0 0.0018 meters. We just found that. Plus its initial length of 2.45 meters to give us a final length of about 2.448 meters. And it got colder. We can see that it contracted. It got smaller. So that makes sense. All right. Let's check out another one. Expansion of an aluminum rod. 
an aluminum rod has a length of exactly one meter at 300 K. How much longer is it when placed in a 400 degree Celsius oven? Well, to do this again, let's take a look and look up the coefficient of linear expansion for aluminum. And when I do that, I find that the coefficient of expansion for aluminum is 23 times 10 to the minus six per degree Celsius. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is I notice I have temperatures in kelvins and Celsius. So let's convert that 400 degrees Celsius to Kelvin so that we're consistent. So that'll be temperature in Kelvin is equal to our temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So that will be 400 degrees C plus 273.15 or 673.15 Kelvins. Now to figure out how much it, longer it is, it's change in length. Well, we can go to change in length equals alpha L initial delta T, which is going to be 23 times 10 to the minus six per degree C times its initial length, one meter, and the change in temperature from 673.15 K to 300 K is just 373.15 Okay, or put all that into my calculator, I come up with a change in length of about 0 0.0086 meter. All right, let's see if we can't take a look at one that has a volumetric expansion. If we have water spilling out of a glass, a glass of water with volume one liter is completely filled at five degrees C. How much water will spill out of the glass when the temperature is raised to 85 degrees C? And here we need to recognize that both the glass and the water will expand. So if we calculate how much each of those expands, the difference in those should be the amount that the water spills out. So let's start with the water. For our water, we know the change in volume is going to be our volumetric coefficient of expansion, beta, times our initial volume, times our change in temperature, where beta for water is 207 times 10 to the minus six times V initial one liter times our change in temperature, 80 degrees C gives me a change in volume of about 0 0.0166 liter. All right, let's do the same for the glass. Change in volume will be beta V0 delta T, which will be 27 times 10 to the minus six for glass times one times 80 for a change in volume of about 0 0.0022 liter. Now, if I want to know what the amount of water that spills out is, all I do is I take the difference of those two and the difference which is just going to be 0.0166 liters minus 0.0022 liters comes out to be about 0 0.0144 liters of water will spill out. All right, let's take a look at one last problem here. Jody can't remove her wedding ring. If she runs the entire ring under hot water, what'll happen to the hole in the middle? Well, the trick with these questions is realizing that in linear expansion, every linear, linear dimension of the object changes by the same fraction when it's heated or cooled. So effectively, what we can do is we can treat this as a big circle, the outer circle and the little circle, and let's expand them both. If we treat as a big, the big circle, it's going to expand but the inner circle here is also going to expand. Then all we do is we put those two expanded circles back together to figure out the new dimensions of the entire ring. So what's it going to do? Well, the hole in the middle expands as well as the outer part. So it's going to expand. Hopefully she can then get the ring off. And you know, maybe a little dish soap might help too for lubricant. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start 
on thermal expansion. If you need more help or looking for assistance, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day, everyone.